This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. Good evening. Time for Startup Talk brought to you by Indian River State College and Express Printing of Port St. Lucie. And now the one and only Mr. Tom Kindred with a IRSC hat that must be at least 50 years old. <laughs> well, yes. And, and for those uh, who will watch us uh, on YouTube, uh, the reason I look like I do tonight <laughs> yes. uh, is... Um, the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute had its had its uh, traditional holiday gathering today, uh, and I am and you the were official, barbecuing, and I was barbecuing. All yes, right, yes, that's and right. You didn't so, invite me. I, well, I meant to, and and uh, that's all right. I, I hung up in all the details, but uh, we had our gathering today, so um, so I, I look a little weathered and. Uh, and there's a few uh, few stains on my shirt. Well, you know, if you have any leftovers, just keep it on your desk, and I'll pick it up when we get back <laughs> right. next week. We could do that. We could do that. So uh, welcome to another uh, segment and installment of Startup Talk, the show designed to assist and help Treasure and Research Coast residents who want to start, grow, or accelerate their business. And as I always say, what a great place it is to own and operate a business along the beautiful Research and Treasure Coast. We will spend time during our hour together tonight to highlight and create awareness regarding the very powerful and robust business assistance and support programs which exist right here in our community at our very own Indian River State College. I am Tom Kindred and I serve the community as the Regional Director for the Small Business Development Center at Indian River State College. Our show this evening, as always, is powered by the SBDC at IRSC and our friends at Express Printing of Port St. Lucie. So, yes, we did have a, uh, we had our function today. Dr. Massey uh, came by. Uh, he, uh, he got a, a good, uh, healthy plate of ribs and uh, some mac and cheese. So and how much did uh, you charge him? Well, the standard, the standard price. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we had a good, good gathering today. Uh, we, um, we normally do this, uh, as a way to thank those that, that support our EDI program. So we had, had a, a lot of folks there, had Ann Decker's foundation, uh, office there that, that helps us. We had the, the, the virtual campus e-learning group that helps us, as you know, Juan helps us with our sure, filming of our, sure. of our TV version of startup talk. Uh, so Juan and, uh, and his group and Paul LaFavie and his group were there today. Uh, so, again, had, had all the folks that help us and support us uh, with the EDI program. So it was a good day. So had a good time. And, uh, the weather and you, couldn't have been better for Weather you. was great. And, uh, and again, you can all you got to do is look at me and tell that we had a good time. Yeah. It's all over my shirt. <laughs> hey, so uh, okay. is everything all right in your world this evening, Greg? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. All right. We're getting ready to hit the road with the basketball team. All right. Where's your next stop? We are in Ocala all weekend. Are you really? We have St. Pete in the 2 o'clock game. This is the big Juco tournament that I, is uh, too heard. big for one city. So uh, half the games are in Ocala. The other half are in Gainesville, uh, which is where we were last week. Right. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, okay. it's going to be a, a busy Saturday and Sunday night. We play Central Florida, the host school. So okay. it's not going to be easy. Central Florida, you've always said, uh, pretty strong oh, with good. athletics. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're good. They're good. Okay. And so is St. Pete. So I, they're both going to be the most athletic teams we've faced all year. How so. you know? How is Santa Fe as, a, as an athletic school? The, the Very same? good. Are they, they good? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, they beat us. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, um, you know, Greg, we've had on our show multiple times, you know, we've had, uh, Bob O'Brien from the CCTI. We've had, uh, Susan Klein from the CCTI. You know, we've spent many a night on this show talking about, um, employee training, professional development, something that I obviously feel very strongly about 
uh, spent many years, uh, owned and operated my own business. I was always a believer in training, should have done more, um, should have, um, should have been, become more engaged, uh, with, with, uh, some innovative training with the employees. And we, and we did do some, uh, I, I have to have to say we, we were probably a little more progressive than, than some private, uh, enterprise businesses, but, um, but it, it, it's an important issue and we've talked about it a number of times and, um, and we've talked about the CCTI team at the college and, and how they can work with an organization to, to build that professional development program. Uh, in these conversations, we've discussed, uh, you know, how many times that, that development planning that, that is helping your employees grow uh, professionally and, and really shaping uh, the future of the, uh, of their careers. And, um, you know, but, but we've also talked about for a number of reasons, um, that this important activity is ignored, uh, or handled as somewhat of an afterthought. So many, you know, businesses just feel like they don't have the time or see the importance of the training. Uh, and I think, uh, honestly, I think these companies and organizations pay a high price uh, for not uh, really focusing on training. Uh, loss of, of young talent, uh, low employee morale, low employee engagement, um, less employee loyalty, which, uh, which really means uh, decreased uh, productivity. Um, but tonight, tonight we have with us an, a human resource professional who believes in and understands the importance of professional development. Uh, and under her leadership, her HR department last year created and launched probably one of the most impressive, aggressive, and innovative professional development programs that I've certainly uh, ever seen. Uh, so I, I am proud tonight to have with us Ms. Saritha Leon, the HR director from St. Lucie County, Board of County Commissioners. Welcome to the show, Sarita. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, really, have uh, it's been a great opportunity to get to know Sarita and get to know her department, and uh, and really kind of uh, see what they've been doing, and, and really be uh, be uh, be somewhat of a partner through the CCTI with what with what they're doing. So it's it's really been nice to watch and and been impressive. So uh, again, looking forward to our conversation tonight. Uh, real quickly, we are coming up on the end of the year. Uh, so uh, as we close in on the end of the year, not a tremendous amount of, uh, of trainings left for the year, but there are still some. Um, so quickly, just uh, talk about a few of those. We've got, um, we've got on, uh, on December the 14th, we've got down at the Moorgate Library uh, in Stewart, we've got financial record keeping for small businesses. What's that? That's right. I know. Uh, it's um, it's something that's foreign to a lot of business people, financial record keeping. Are you a small business owner and looking to start a business and need to know more about your financial record keeping and reporting? This is the workshop for you. This will not take the place uh, of an accounting firm uh, you might use, but it will give you as the owner uh, things to ask your CPA to better understand your business and its financial condition. So that's financial record keeping for small businesses down at the Moorgate Library on December the 14th. That is an evening class, again, brought to you by SCORE and SBDC. There is no charge for that course. And then I do believe our final uh, class of the year is how to start a small business. So here's, here's your opportunity. You're going to start a small business. Uh, that's, that's the goal for the new year. Uh, December the 21st. Uh, at the Indian River County Chamber of Commerce, uh, how to start a small business. Have you been considering starting your own small business but are unsure of where to begin? This is the workshop for you. You'll be provided with information about startup fundamentals, marketing and business planning, financing, licensing, employee issues, uh, which you can learn a little bit about employee issues tonight. So um, uh, once you've successfully completed this session, you'll be better able to decide if your business idea is worth pursuing. So again, we're wrapping up the year. It's been a great year. Another solid year for the SBDC um, who handed out, uh, I believe we're knocking on the door of 4,000 hours worth of um, consulting uh, around the four counties. Wow. Okay. 
So a, a solid year again, uh, a lot of engagement with the SBDC. Again, uh, with our partnership with SCORE, probably conducted close to 300 workshops and seminars uh, over the course of 2016. So again, been a good year. Um, so again, the most important thing to remember about the seminars and the workshops uh, that are conducted by SCORE and the SBDC is that most of these training sessions are provided free. There is no cost to attend these events, nor is there any cost to engage the SBDC or one of their consultants. And as I tell folks all the time, back when I was in business, uh, for all those many uh, years, had I taken the time to become engaged in and participate in these business assistance programs, uh, I can uh, feel very confident that I could have been a better manager, owner, and operator. Uh, the college, its president, Dr. Massey, and the Board of Trustees have done an incredible job of building what I like to call a very powerful one-stop shop for business assistance through what we call the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. The EDI is made up of that Small Business Development Center, the Business Incubation Program, and the Corporate and Community Training Institute. You can always get the latest at uh, irscbiz.com and check out the events calendar. As always, big thank you to the SBDC and their consultants for the work they perform in assisting and supporting our region's business community. And again, thank them especially for the job well done in 2016. So that's what we've got coming up. And uh, again, just very, very pleased and proud and honored to have with us tonight uh, Miss Saritha Leon. Uh, again, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, I've had the opportunity over the course of the last couple of months to um, to, to meet a number of times uh, with Saritha and talk about what they're doing at St. Lucie County in terms of uh, professional development, employee training. Really been a very impressive program uh, that they developed and launched in 2016. Uh, you know, quite quite the program, but we'll talk about a little bit of the data in just a minute. But uh, I guess let's just start start uh, real quickly. Saritha, give us a little background on yourself, professional uh, background, experience, education, and, and how you found your way to St. Lucie County. I'd be happy to, Tom. Um, actually, I've been with St. Lucie County for one year and a half now. I actually had retired after 30 years of service. Um, and when did government. you when did you start working when you were about fifteen? <laughs> no, not already, quite, but I, I, I was going to say younger. <laughs> <laughs> I served a lot of those years, most of those years in Orange County government. Some in Brevard County. I've worked as an assistant county administrator in Orange County, an HR director, and uh, just had lots of experience. And retired, started my own HR consulting company, which I did a few years. And uh, the opportunity came open in St. Lucie County. I applied, and here I am, and enjoying serving and learning this community. Well, great, great. Just keep, you notice where she just keeps moving south? <laughs> Starts off in orange. She must be working her way to Miami or something. <laughs> you know, it's, the yeah, beach. The Caribbean, I think, probably. I think, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm planted here for a little while. <laughs> um you know, talk to us, I guess, a little bit about, uh, you know, the HR department at St. Lucie County. You, you know, you've got a pretty pretty impressive team over there. I've gotten an opportunity to meet a number of your members, but talk a little bit about the team. I think we have a fantastic team. We could not do the things that we've done without a committed group of employees. So we have a staff of about 11 people, and we have two people who are actually working with other agencies like Florida Blue, um, who assist us also. But our team is so committed to doing a great job. I've been very impressed with that group. And I think we've uh, formed a pretty solid team. Yeah. We have employees who've been with us from as little as four months to 18 years right. of service with the county. So that's been really well, really, really good. In addition to having HR certifications, the entire group um, has been trained recently in Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt. So we're already in focused on process improvements for the coming year. Um, so I really can't say enough about the team. The team is fantastic. Yeah, and again, I think uh, as we continue our conversation tonight, you, you, obviously the department's been very innovative, and that you know you just pointed out that your team's been through Six Sigma training. So you know it really shows a commitment that that you, even your department makes to to professional development. Thank you. Yeah. And can I add too that we were so excited 
to be uh, one of the winners of the 2016 Best Places to Work designation. That's really big for us. We're very happy about that. I didn't, I didn't know that. I should yeah. have had that on my <laughs> list. I, I missed that in my research. I wasn't going to miss it. <laughs> well, you're in, you're in another one of those places right now. So, yeah, we're proud of that, too. Great, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? T- let's, let's talk a little bit, too, because I know, I know this was a little bit, you know, when I, when I reached out, uh, to you and to your department to, to be on the radio show. I, I'm, th- there was a little, there was a, I think there was a little, uh, a little mystery there. Like what, do, you know, what do you want to talk to an HR department for? But, and it is, a, it is probably a little different. It's not something that, that, uh, that should, you know, HR kind of plays the behind the scenes role. They're not, they're not out there all always out, out in the front, but, but, uh, so talk about that role of the HR department in, in an organization the size of St. Lucie County. Well, in St. Lucie County, we currently have about 742 employees. In the HR, we're happy to say we manage the people piece. That's very important. To run any organization, you have to appreciate your people and know that they are just your primary resource. So we are a full-service HR department. We do everything from employee relations to training, benefits, wellness, compensation, risk management, you name it, we're doing it in HR for St. Lucie County. Wow. Now, you had mentioned Florida Blue. What Mm -hmm. do they have to do with your HR department? Florida Blue is our health insurance carrier, and we have an on-site representative from Florida Blue there to assist our employees. It's really great. Oh, sure. Yeah. So with claims and issues like that. Is that, is that simply typical in the industry today? Is that I wouldn't say it's typical, but it can be done if you negotiate it into your contract. Yeah. So we're really happy to do that. Her name is Rennie Gent. She does a fantastic job for us. I mean, that, that's got to be a huge benefit to the employees. Sure. Instead of kind of fumbling around for answers, you've got somebody right there on site that can go and answer all the kind of, which I can only imagine are, sometimes very complex, complicated questions for the insurance carrier. It's very helpful. Okay. Now, uh, you know, you've been, you talked about you've been in the HR field for a number of years. Uh, talk about, I mean, let, I, obviously, and, and I assume, and, and goes without probably saying, but HR issues, have they become more complex and complicated, you know, through the years? Um, I'm sure it's a big resounding <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. There's a big I, sigh. I, <laughs> I would have to say probably so. And the reason I say that is because in HR, we're problem solvers. And just when you think you've seen everything, you see something different. So um, sometimes we're challenged by some of the different things that we see and that we ma- have to manage. Um, but it's, it's pretty complex, and it has been complicated. It also has a lot to do with different laws, and there's just lots of considerations. But it's also what keeps human resources so very interesting. Right. It's like you're doing something new all the time. Right. So you really have to be good problem solvers. Yeah. And I guess, again, with, with the more sophisticated even employees become, I guess, the more sophisticated the, the HR department has to become. There's more yes. information available now. There's, you know, there's, there, you know, I guess mm-hmm. all kinds of, like you said, new rules, new regulations, new, um, I, you know, I even remember in, in my, uh, you know, my business, there was, you know, there from time to time, I would have to provide more information. I would have to provide reports. And it all, exactly. there's always new things going on. Well, we're doing more than hiring and retiring employees now. We like to say that we are a strategic business partner for the county. So we're very Im- involved in strategic leadership. And that's why we're so interested in developing our employees. That's a great strategy, though, if you think about it. I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about last year again. Just, uh, you know, your department's, you know, comprehensive program for professional development really probably, again, was was one of the more impressive uh, undertakings that, that I've seen. I don't consider myself to be an HR expert, and I haven't been exposed to, to, to you know, hundreds or thousands of, of HR departments, but I, I honestly I gotta believe that what you what St. Lucie County and your department uh, put together and and executed last year was really quite impressive, taking really every employee at the county through some level of professional mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. Uh, so talk a little bit about the program last year. What what was behind all of it? What drove it? What were the thoughts and 
Okay. And, uh, Be happy to. Um, I really have to give um, credit to our county administrator, Howard Tipton. It was really his idea, his vision to make sure that employee development was, was going on in the county. Um, he heard the employees as they talked about wanting development. We did an employee survey. They talked about learning and development because so many organizations don't have a budget to train. And over the years, you saw less and less and less training. So you're right. We were, we were pretty aggressive, but we could not have done it without the help of IRSC. I did not have a, a professional training staff at that time. So IRSC was the perfect partner. Uh, we now have a, a training and employee relations manager. Her name is Ms. Betty Jackson. And I know she's going to lead us to do some great things in training. But you all are a partner for us. We don't have the staff to do all the training that we want to do. And you can't train 740 employees right. with one training uh, professional and an assistant person right. and an assistant helping her. Right. So, um, but that was his vision that we do training for employees. And one of the things he wanted to make sure that we did was customer service training, which is so important today right. because customer service is lost in so many situations. And it's, you're, it's heartwarming when you get great customer service. Right. I once worked in an organization where um, the business wasn't so great. I think I mentioned this to you. You know, people had to pay tickets. Right. But they said, you all do great customer service, even though I'm, you know, doing something I'm not <laughs> happy right. with. Because right. the employees were trained in delivering customer service. So he saw that it's very important. Did you want right. to say something else? No, no. I, I, I love this. I, it, what I was going to say was I didn't, even, I didn't even prompt you to say that. You just, oh. you just <laughs> went right into the uh, IRSC partnership. I love yeah, that. Well, Not, because it's been that, great for us. Yeah. It has. And, um, you know, we're evolving in terms of we, we had to get people trained, and that was the best model then. And now we're looking at our model and seeing how we can change it and what we can do better. But we still need y'all's assistance in making sure we can do what it is that we're charged to do right. and uh, fulfill that commitment that we have to our employees. Um, our program last year was called LEAP, and it still is called LEAP, and it stood for Leadership Excellence Through Action and Practice. So we wanted to say, um, we're not just training people, we want to see the action, we want to have the practice of the things that people are learning. So we developed three phases of a program, one for employees, one for supervisors, and one for managers and uh, directors. So it's been very, very successful. Um, a few months ago, we launched a, a management program called IGNITE, and then again, you know, we're not going to always go with, with all of this, but we've got Inspire, Grow, Navigate, Innovate, <laughs> Transform, and Empower. we got a new program, but we're not ascribing names to it. Um, <laughs> so but Ignite is going extremely well. We've got 15 managers enrolled in that program, one from a, constitu a constitutional office. And each month they meet to talk about something and learn something new in leadership. Last week we had a session on media relations, which was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Eric Gill. Uh, <laughs> Eric told me yes. he was going to do and that. And he did yes. a fantastic job for us. Um, okay. Actually, he, did, uh, had, he developed scenarios with uh, the help of Ms. Jackson. And each of our managers was given a scenario. And they were filmed on camera a answering that scenario. And um, they he put a little heat to them in terms of answering it. Because you never know this when is crisis this is going to happen. This is crisis management type stuff. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So but it's great training. And that's Absolutely. the level and the kind of training that we're trying to bring to our employees and our managers. Yeah, no. Uh, again, you uh, the the program really uh, very innovative. The, the leap program, and and again, you um, you 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 took every employee through at least a, one of these levels and phases in in the leap program. Did you not? Yep, that was our intent. Each yeah. uh, employee, supervisor, manager, director. Wow. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, you can see uh, innovative and aggressive. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back to continue our conversation uh, with uh, St. Lucie County's HR Director, Ms. Sarita Lino. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. And we are back. This is Startup Talk from Indian River State College's Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. And tonight, uh, very pleased um, and honored to have with us the HR Director from St. Lucie County, uh, Board of County Commissioners, Ms. Sarita Leon. And again, as I talked about at the top of the show, uh, St. Lucie County has really done an incredible job uh, of uh, creating a very innovative, inclusive uh, professional development 
uh, training program that involved all of the employees uh, over the course of the entire year of the 2016 uh, period. And uh, I've had the, the pleasure uh, to be involved and, and support and, and, uh, and see what, what's been going on with the program. Uh, we have, um, so again, welcome, welcome to the show, Saritha. Thank you. You, um, you know, you talked about um, uh, the LEAP and the IGNITE program. Uh, you know, why should an, an organization engage in employee training? Obviously, you see and, and uh, you know, County Administrator Howard Tipton sees some benefit to it. So what, what is the benefit? Well, you mentioned employee morale a moment ago. Uh, for one thing, it really helps to keep employees motivated, um, learning something new and different. You might have an employee, for instance, who's been in a role or a job for quite a long time. Maybe they know their job. But it's a wonderful thing to be able to learn something new and something different. Um, I think the success of any company depends on its people. Again, as I said before, the employees are your best and your greatest asset. And things are constantly changing in the business world. If you want to be innovative, you want to be out front with things, you want to keep up with the market and other organizations, you have to train and develop your employees. Investing in them, I think, is an investment not only in the organization, but in the community. And you know, I, you, you touched on something, too, that, that, that was part of our discussion in kind of the review of your program, is that for a lot of your employees, it was the... Some, sometimes it was the first time they had been in the room with, with others from other departments. So for them, it was, was really a very positive experience because they got to, got to, got to know what other departments did and, right. and meet we other very departments. We were very happy and very pleased about that. You don't always have the opportunity for someone who works in road and bridge to work with somebody who works in, who get to know someone who works in the Office of Management and Budget. Right. But in a training class, you can have people from all over the organization get to know each other and form, you know, partnerships and friendships. And it's just good to know people and to right. meet people and be able to work across those lines. Now, where were these training sessions? Were they at the college or? Right. They were right. at the college. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and, and I might say the facility, the facility there um, was fantastic as far as we were concerned. It helped us a lot because we did not have the space in our county building. We do have space in the fence in the fence center, but um, the space that you all had was right. was great for what we were trying to do. Well, and again, I, I think it's also and nice and by. well, nice and, and and sort of address the issue too. It it's sort of nice to get the employees out of maybe their day to day yes. element, get them into right. a different surrounding. Maybe they open up a little more. Is that mm -hmm. a, does that play a role in all this? I think it's always refreshing to be someplace new and different. I think so. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, and, and of course, training can really help address multiple workplace situations. I mean, talk talk about those issues that are so, you know, um, important today. You know, diversity and you know, time management and, and leadership. I mean, these are just so critical for the success of an organization today. Talk about the kind of classes they all went through. Okay, I'd be happy to. Um, in our LEAP program, as, as I said, we had three different phases. And we wanted that core phase to be really significant for our employees, to give them that foundation. So some of the classes that we offered in that core class were customer service, time, man time matters, uh, legal issues and ethics in the workplace, diversity, effective business, communication. As you can see by that list, that's a great foundation for all employees to have. And then at phase two, our managers and supervisors were being trained on peer to boss. Sometimes people are promoted and then they have to know, how do I lead the group that I was just a part of? Um, then there's the legal side of management, conflict and challenging employees, communication for management, leading in today's public sector and motivating and engaging employees. Again, a really good foundational list for employees. And then we had another list for the directors um, as well. So we tried to make sure that everybody had a baseline. Um, and then we'll kind of move and go from there as we go on to that next level. Right. So how large a group were you, are you talking about that would be training at IRSC? Well, we opened it up for our entire organization. You know, the number changes. Like I said, we have 742 employees, but, you know, people leave, they retire, um, things of that nature. But all employees were signed up to attend uh, the series of classes, yeah, as, as could happen. I would say that for our directors, the attendance was a little different than our employees, yet and still everybody was able to attend classes and That's encouraged great. to do so. 
I think I think and again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I think the the county literally conducted 125 separate courses. Wow. And uh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it was definitely. Um, uh, you know, uh, logistics, you know, that we had to work out times and schedules. and That's and, why you uh, couldn't get into your office a few days. I couldn't get in my office a couple of days. Um, but uh, it, w- and it was it really was from our perspective, too, from from the EDI perspective and the CCTI. It was really great to see those employees coming in the building, uh, engaging, uh, you know, s- you know, using the facility. It, it really was it was impressive. You know, there were days that there was maybe one class in one room and a class in another room. So, you know, there was a lot of folks, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, in the building and engaging in, in courses. And so it really was quite impressive uh, to see see the logistics and see uh, Saritha's team and what they did to, to organize, organize all this and put it together. So, again, it was impressive. But 125 different separate courses. And uh, and I, I can't I wish I could remember the number of hours, but it was a it, it, a, a lot, lot. <laughs> it was a lot of hours of training. Yes. We need Bob here with all his, with his uh, with his data. Um, you know, and I think it, well, we had a discussion um, again when we were reviewing uh, and evaluating the program last year. You know, we talked about uh, one of the biggest issue is really a big desire here with training is to solve problems before they happen. Because I get, we all know that once the problems happen, then you know, then we're down a whole different you know road, and uh, and it gets a whole lot more complex and complicated, and uh, and more difficult to deal with. So again, training is about really kind of heading off problems. Is that a fair statement? I would say that it's extremely helpful. I really would. Um, I think it's important to train people in things like critical thinking, um, conflict management, project management, which we did with you all as well. And I think when you train on business and management concepts, people begin to approach problems and situations differently. And I think that makes a, a big a big deal of difference. Yeah. Uh, the other side of problem solving I- is the aspect that professional development and employee training can also assist people, you know, who want to want to better themselves and yes. want to rise up through an organization. And that that's what I, I really feel is the most important issue. You know, acquire a better job, get get better pay. And, and, you know, better themselves and their family while helping the organization uh, perform better. Talk about that positive side of, of training. You know, we talk about solving the problems, but let's talk about the, the positive side of this. I mean, well, I have to say, too, uh, just keeping it realistic for a lot of employees that hadn't been training previously. This was a big change. This was a big culture change to say, now we want you to go. We want you to get a, certifi- get a certificate. We want you to take all these classes. And people have work to do. Right. And so we did We did get some, I've got a lot of work to do, right. <laughs> you know. Right. I don't have time for this. Do I really have to be there? Right. But I will say that some of that changed. We had people who had that mindset, and it changed. And they came back later and told us they really saw the benefit uh, of the training. And that was very, very um, encouraging. Very How many encouraging. of your people had been in that college environment? Well, I, that I don't know, but one thing that I am grateful for is I think that because they were in that environment, it will open more of them up to wanting to go ahead and go right, uh, to the school and to get it, yeah. that further development and education. That's what we're hoping right. for. And, and, and you're so right, too. And, and one of the biggest issues that I've always thought about is that if you could, you know, college for a lot of people could be intimidating. It, it can be a little a little scary and and you know I don't want to I don't want to go someplace that I'm I'm unfamiliar with and I I don't know if mm-hmm. I, how well I'll perform mm-hmm. and I, I always think that's that's one of the the really great benefits of doing the training like we're doing on the college campus you know it brings people on the campus that may not traditionally be be on the campus then they look around they go this isn't such a scary place this right. is in fact I, I this is a great place to be and I wanna I want to continue my education right. and go back. Well, they get to have that experience. They get to see what the school is like. They get to see what the instructors are like or what it's like to sit in a classroom. And perhaps some people hadn't had that opportunity as much as we would like to think. Um, But I I suggest that everyone take full advantage of training opportunities when they come, regardless of how great or how small, because you never know how it's going to help you in that next level of development. And not just, you know, training uh, at work, but training at home. You can do training at home online now. There's so much that's available for people oh, just, just to continue to develop themselves. Right. And, you know, you, you did. You, you just mentioned uh, that 
that you did get a little pushback, which is natural. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, when folks are, are uh, you know, the whole, uh, you know, having to face something new and change. Yeah, I'm busy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well we have course, work, real work to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. right. And, you know, that's, again, it is, it re- well, it goes back to, I, I've always told you, one of my favorite you, you know concepts in business and it took me becoming involved you know with the sbdc and and with the college uh and this and the entrepreneurship development institute of the college to, to really to get get a grasp on this concept but we talk about you know you have to spend time working in the business versus spending time working on the business mm. and and that's a difficult concept for a lot of people mm. even even small business owners they will tell you i'm just too busy you know i can't I don't have time to go to a training or learn something new. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really the same concept you run into with the employees. I'm too busy to go to, go to a training. Mm-hmm. But, but it is so important. And, and I think when it comes from, from you know, leadership in an organization, like, like coming from you or coming from, from, uh, from Howard Tipton, you know, I think it's meaningful for them. They see that this is important. That yes. Yes, the day-to-day work is important. But working on ourselves and working on a on a better organization is important. Yes, it's very important to have um, that support from the top down. And uh, as I said, Mr. Tipton really wanted to see this. And our commissioners are committed to that training and development as well. Our managers had to be in order to schedule their employees and to schedule the work around releasing them and letting them go. So it really takes a commitment from everyone yeah. in the organization. And, and again, I just... Uh, you know, one one thing I, I wanted to say, too, is th- th- like you said, you, you got a little pushback in the beginning. But once people started getting into the groove and taking classes, really, overall, you your feedback was very positive throughout the whole program. It was. Yeah. And not they didn't just write it on paper. I mean, they right. told us that as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you you heard and you didn't just hear it from two or three. I mean, you really got solid feedback that that employees said, and they and they thanked you. Did yes. they, they said, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Um, so, you know, uh, every workplace, you know, would want to have the most well-trained and workforce. So many organizations do not make training the priority. Um, what do you feel the barriers are for HR professionals? You know, what, what are the... What, what do you guys face as HR professionals in, in trying to provide the training to employees? Well, very often it's resources. If you don't have the training team, if you don't have the training staff, um, and that's a very big one. I mean, if, if your organization has the team, has the money, has the resources, and then has the commitment from above, you can make the training happen. But you have to have, you have, to have that commitment. And you have to have some resources. <coughs> Right. And again, I think and you make a good point, too. If you have the resources and you have the money, that's not enough either, because that just makes it providing the training easy. But you've really got to have this culture. Exactly. Right. That Mm -hmm. where the emphasis is on everyone becoming a better employee, doing a better job, becoming more engaged. Well, we're trying to create a learning culture where people are always open to learning. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'll never forget. I had a professor that, uh, you know, told us uh, that you know once you've stopped learning, you know, it's your current job. Dust the resume off. It's time to move on. <laughs> so I- if you're not learning, you're just you're not growing in the organization. Is well, yeah, I'd like to share too. As I mentioned, we we've done Leap and uh, Ignite, the training program for for our leaders and our managers. So next year, we're going to be um, starting a, a program for our employees called Spark. It'll be a mentoring program, and Spark kind of goes with Ignite. But it'll be a, a, a mentoring program where we'll take about 10 to 12 of our employees and match them with uh, managers or directors for about just about a year and do a mentoring program. But we're going to train the people who are going to be the mentors because so often you'll have a mentoring program and you'll, you'll say, okay, we're assigning this person to you to mentor. But sometimes people don't have a clue, well, how do I do this? So we are at least going to try to do a foundation of learning for the mentors to know, you know, here's what the process is like. Here's what you can expect, and then we'll we'll hope it'll go it'll go well. So what I'm a sure great well. idea! Yeah, yeah, that's phenomenal. Well, you know, I think so. So many um, careers can be changed and enhanced so much if you just have a mentor. If you have someone you can go to to ask questions, to help you solve problems, um, just to help you chart that course, I think it's invaluable. Well, and again, you know, uh, something that I never was exposed to when you were you know, in your own business. And, and until I got involved in entrepreneurship, you never 
you know, really heard about mentoring. But men mentoring really is such a, a key uh, element in, in entrepreneurship. It, it's something we talk about all the time and, and something we, we encourage entrepreneurs to, you know, find a mentor, find someone who's, who's done maybe what you're thinking about doing and, mm -hmm. and learn from those people. So for you to bring mentoring in, you know, it, it, again, a little innovative, but makes sense because, like you said, now you've got someone that can kind of help you with the path. You're right, not and we have to be concerned about that next level of, of succession. We have to start growing people and getting them ready to move on up in the organization. Right. And that's part of what we're doing. Well, now, is a lot of that because of boomers, possibly, who've been with the county for a while and are going to be retiring and... We've had a lot of uh, people retire, and so, yes, you do have to make sure your organization is solid and able to be sustainable. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did, did the, uh, the, the state's drop program, that, that really changed the dynamics, did it not? Because it, it forces you to know more, well, I think I'll stay another year. I mean, you, you've got to leave now, right? Yeah, what I'll say about that <laughs> is uh, all over the state, you know, when they change the rate, of what employees would be receiving when they dropped and lowered that rate. You had a lot of people go in at the same time and drop. So organizations across the state saw a lot of people retiring at the same time. Um, so it was sort of a mass exodus. And I guess there's been a rule change with drop. Uh, you, you, you must stay out now a year. Is that so? So you really don't have the, well, I'll drop out and come back. 30 days from now and, and continue to go. So there's really no more of that either. So well, Yeah, some people do make the decision, just as I said I did even, to be retired and then to no longer be retired. But sometimes I think you need that time just to kind of settle into well, retirement right. because very often people are so culturally shocked with retirement, they'd go right back to work the next month if they could. Right. Well, now, the people who are retiring, I would think that's a very large brain drain if you think about it. Well, it, it certainly could be. It very, very well could be in a lot of organizations. That's why I'm saying it's, it's important to get that next level of employees ready to move and move up. And I think we have a responsibility to do that because, you know, right, right. in the end, we serve a community. So we don't right. turn our lights off at 5 o'clock and it's the end of the job. We serve right. a community. Well, and, and again, just like, just like mentoring, secession planning is, again, such an important topic in in you know, the business community, how, how many businesses, you know, find themselves, uh, you know, having to close or, or, you know, create some sort of quick sale or something because it, there is no secession plan. And, and you're so right about a, a, an organization like the county, you, you couldn't just decide, well, you know, we're just not going to open tomorrow because we don't have anybody. <laughs> no. So you could face a real problem if you don't have a secession plan in place because lack of experience in road and bridge and engineering and purchasing, those are critical departments in, in an organization like a county, mm -hmm. municipality. Well, there are a lot of facets to succession planning, and organizations do it in a lot of different ways. But one of the ways, as I said, that we really are trying to, to um, go after it is with the mentoring. And so this will be our first time around. We'll only be doing 10 to 12 employees trying to do what we can manage because, after all, we're still doing – a lead and leap right. and a whole lot of other things in between right. um, so we're excited about it <coughs> all right now um, you know again you you mentioned earlier and I do appreciate the 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 plug but you know you're obviously your department obviously you know facilitated and, and managed the program and, and created it but you know support for this kind of professional development program uh, is really strong throughout the county's leadership but but uh, again talk about that kind of support that you got from an outside organization you talked about you know we could you know we needed the help I mean and 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 you know have you have you seen that kind of help you've worked in Orange County you worked in Brevard I mean did you see the kind of support that, that was available through through IRSC was is it out there is that is that a typical situation or well I would say i um, coming from the Orlando area yes that support is there especially because we have the University of Central Florida but I think a bigger part of it is that sometimes organizations don't know that the support is there. And that's the most important thing, to know what the resources are. And um, even when we met with you a week ago, I learned things right. that you all could assist us with that I didn't know. Right. So it's just important to have the knowledge and to know what the resources are. And then you can think about how you can you know, fill different needs. Okay. And um, 
you know, you're um, you talked about to uh, again and touch on it one more time because it, I think it is so important that 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 we stress the the idea that you do have to have the the top down support. It, it's it's one thing to just put together a training and say let's put everybody in a customer service class, but it it is so important that 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 the support is there from from you know from management and administration and that there is a culture of and I like your your comment you know culture of of learning we're going to continue to better ourselves through training mm -hmm. and and but but you know again just address that as as we kind of uh, come to a close because I think that's an important point for for any organization well okay as I said um, Howard Tipton our county manager uh, county administrator is um, very committed to learning and development himself and therefore to our employees and really set the course for us to move forward with training and allow us to do it. Right. So um, the reason we've been able to be innovative and do different things is because we've had his leadership and we've had his support and that's invaluable. Right. And, and you, t you even talked about, uh, you know, your county commission. Uh, are, are they, you know, are they aware of, 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 of really how much you did last year? Did, does it, has it come up at a county commission meeting? Did did somebody well, give give some, give some kudos to to what your department and and that you pulled off last year? I'd say that um, different things have come up. For instance, we talked about the best places to work, right. and some of the reason why we won best places to work is because we were so aggressive in, yeah. in this training. So right. yes, in that sense, it has. It, yeah, well, that makes sense too. And again, that's that is really such a great point to make too. Is that is that training employees can really address the whole work environment yeah so part of part of why you're a great place to work is the fact that you provide training mm -hmm. <laughs> and i think that's a part you know and, and i guess uh, again as we as we close that's i think really the point that i always want to make to businesses is that training really is worth the investment it's I worth the investment so. of time yes. money effort yes and you're an HR professional, and you you've seen you've seen the difference when, in in organizations that engage in it and those that don't. Correct. All right. Well, again, I cannot say enough about how impressed I am uh, with with your department's efforts in 2016 with your with your LEAP program. It, it it just in in just in magnitude of the program alone, it was impressive. Uh, and and to to reach out to every employee uh, was was impressive. Thank you, and I have to give credit to Sue McNichol, our training coordinator. She did a lot of the work in terms of scheduling these classes, making sure employees were coming. So I really have to give thank a big thanks to her for that. Yeah, Sue, Sue did a she did she did uh, great work. She was uh, there were many days she was on site at the building. She was helping direct. Mm -hmm. Uh, traffic and, and uh, employees to the right training so absolutely she was very engaged and and, uh, and did a did a did a great job with it so again uh, Saritha I, uh, I certainly appreciate your time tonight to talk about this very important uh, subject of employee training and professional development uh, you 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 frankly are you're gonna be our poster uh, person <laughs> for training uh, oh, that's, pretty good. That's, pretty good. <laughs> that's right so we appreciate it and I know it's a, it's a busy night for you so so um, we do appreciate you taking time out tonight. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. And uh, and I want to thank everyone for tuning in to another segment of Startup Talk. And, again, thank our guest tonight, Ms. Saritha Leon, uh, from St. Lucie County's uh, Board of County Commissioners the uh, as the director of the HR department. And remind everyone that all the business assistance and resource programs discussed on this segment are available through any member state college's Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute engaged at every stage of enterprise. You can always get more information on all the offerings at the EDI by visiting that irscbiz.com site. That's irscbiz.com. And with that, we'll close it for this evening, and we will talk to you next week on Startup Talk. <laughs>